Good evening. Good evening. We can do better than that. Good evening. Good evening. All right. I think I got everybody's attention. Well, welcome. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, this is, uh, for the record, my last town hall uh, with all of you. Uh, as you know, uh, I lost my primary back in June, which means that we have a new Woodbridge supervisor, Margaret Franklin. I will be coming in to serve you, serve the constituents of Woodbridge, effective January 1. So my last day on the job is December 31. I will tell you up front of the punchline, I have enjoyed every minute of it over the last 12 years. But what you may not be aware of is I've been involved for 20 years, right? I served as a volunteer, as an appointee for eight years leading up to getting elected. And so I had um, my training, if you will, prior to ever getting elected into office. Uh, and for 20 years, uh, I've lived here. 20 years, I've worked for you. Uh, it's been the greatest uh, professional experience in my career. Uh, and uh, I am actively seeking uh, other roles, <laughs> other than elected, uh, going forward uh, for 2020 and beyond. Uh, I live here too. Uh, and uh, I hope to continue in that public service, uh, working with all of you to make some really great things happen uh, here in our community. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for your support over the years. Uh, tonight we have an exciting program. Uh, anytime uh, I, I talk about uh, or I think about change in our community, I get really excited about what we've seen occur over the last decade or so. Uh, and you know, uh, we, uh, together in 2008, 2009, uh, came together to form and to conduct what we call charrettes, right? These were highly professionally facilitated sessions. Uh, some ran three days, in fact. Uh, the first one we did, 300 participants. We flew a team in from California to facilitate, and we got together as a community, private citizens, business owners, church leaders, uh, nonprofit groups, uh, other electeds, and came together to form what uh, we call affectionately the vision of a new Woodbridge. Uh, and that vision uh, really uh, stands on three pillars. Uh, and I know all of you know this because you've been to many town halls and other events, uh, but let me just uh, repeat the three pillars. One is we need to do something differently about building all these homes over here and these strip malls over here and all of our jobs in Tyson's Corner or DC, right? We needed to stop that sort of confusion and chaos. Uh, and so the first pillar of the vision is to stop the residential development that was swirly everywhere, too much as, as it was, and, and build what we call uh, a projects with m a mix of uses, residential, retail, office, park, uh, government, library, etc. All in fully self-contained communities, smaller communities where you can live, work, and play in the community itself. And I'm really happy to say that after a decade, we now have five of those town centers or mixed use or activity centers as some call it, coming up off uh, along the Route 1 corridor. And you know the most obvious one, Potomac Town Center, right? You live there, you work there, you play there, see a movie, go out to dinner, have a drink, etc. cetera. Uh, but maybe you may not be aware that Belmont Bay was actually designed and approved as a mixed-use development. You know, you got uh, the golf course, which is now closed, the marina, uh, the, the green, right? You got the residential, they got a little bit of office with George Mason University there now, a little bit of retail, they're not done yet, but they're well on their way. Neapsco Commons, uh, where the two Hilton hotels are, right, and the Tropical Smoothie, my favorite uh, lunch place. Uh, uh, that's the third. Uh, Belmont Bay, uh, excuse me, uh, Potomac Shores, south of us, off of Route 1, uh, with the high school and a golf course and uh, residential and office coming. Uh, and so, I'm happy to say that we're getting five town centers up out of the ground as a start, as a down payment on the vision of a new Woodbridge. The second pillar, the second pillar of the vision of a new Woodbridge 
is uh, really about um, economic development and jobs. Uh, it's about strong neighborhoods, right? When I took office, I think you all can remember, it was in the worst of uh, a recession in 2008. The national economy was uh, fumbling through. Uh, we had significant, significant number of job losses. Uh, here locally, the economy wasn't doing well. The state, the local government was operating a deficit. Uh, and uh, we had whole communities, streets, cul-de-sacs that were empty because of the home foreclosure uh, crisis that we went through. Woodbridge was one of the 10 worst home foreclosure markets in the country uh, at the time. And so I think, uh, think today uh, we have active communities, neighborhoods that are growing, they're strong, uh, and uh, jobs are coming back uh, here in Eastern Prince William. Uh, and it's uh, really a sight to see, to be able to know that that uh, pillar is uh, moving forward and, um, and taking shape. And then, of course, uh, the other pillar. It's what we talk about every day at the water cooler or over at Wegmans when we see each other or at a, uh, at a board meeting of some sort, and that is traffic, traffic congestion. What are we going to do differently to get us moving again. And I'm happy to say that as one of the three pillars of the vision of a new Woodbridge, we have focused day and night, seven days a week, 365 days a year, at getting us moving forward. And I hope you're beginning to see some of the progress of that third pillar, right? And tonight, we're gonna talk about the uh, recently completed and the future or planned transportation mobility projects that are going on here in Eastern Prince William to address your concern. Uh, I've always thought that I really had two functions in my job title, my job description. It was get stuff done based on your concerns of mobility and jobs and mixed use and residential development, uh, and then be sure to involve you in, that, in those uh, decisions to get your feedback and your concerns and then be able to regurgitate back to you what we're doing. And so these town halls, which I've hosted two a month for 12 years, so somebody can do the math on that, that's a lot of town halls. And town hall for me is really about the private citizens being able to interact with your elected leadership, right? And I consider myself as part of the local elected leadership here in Prince William County. I serve on a board of eight supervisors Seven of them are elected to a magisterial district. Obviously, mine is Woodbridge. One is elected at large and is the chair, man or chairwoman of the board. Uh, and so I've been uh, uh, elected, re-elected three times, right, uh, in the three general elections, four-year terms. Uh, and again, mine is uh, coming to an end December 31. Uh, and so, um, Many of you have seen some very recent uh, uh, progress on the fifth and final town center in Eastern Prince William in Woodbridge. <coughs> we call it North Woodbridge, right? Um, and I have to say uh, that it was so loud and clear to me from all of you that I have not voted in favor of a single residential development application in the Woodbridge District in my 12 years. And Russell's pointing out that I did, that's right, there was one, it never happened, right? It was an age-restricted 24 units, something like that, up on Horner Road, at the dead end of Horner Road. The pastor owns a piece of property up there. Uh, and he came to me and said, Frank, you know, your seniors really need a place to live, affordable, et cetera, we'll do you right. Uh, in a moment of weakness, I supported it. That property was never developed. It was then acquired by another developer, and that's the result of Ray's Regard. Ray's Regard was multiple parcels at the end of Horner Road. But again, I voted against that one. So there was only one that I uh, voted uh, in favor of, and that was for seniors. Um, and so, um, in North Woodbridge, we have another mixed-use 
transit-oriented, smart growth community. Mixed use, office, residential, retail, recreation, government uses, okay? Uh, uh, smart growth, uh, if you go home and Google it, there's actually a set of smart growth principles published by a lot of organizations, but notably EPA. And uh, don't ask me why EPA is involved in helping build our communities, uh, but they are. And so uh, 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 we're talking about a community that um, has a mix of uses, uh, has a, it's pedestrian and bicycle friendly, uh, it has um, uh, the activities and the amenities and the programming that we want in our community, and again, times five. But North Woodbridge uh, took about two and a half years to plan out. Um, as you know, uh, what we have there now is less than perhaps desirable. Uh, I'm trying to put it nicely. Um, it stretches from the Occoquan River at the Occoquan Marina down to Prince William Parkway along Route 1. For the most part, both sides of Route 1. So that's sort of the geographic footprint. But a lot of the focus and effort is going to be focused at the Occoquan Marina and at the current station plaza slash Coles Ford or former Coles Ford site. Uh, and uh, we're going to see some high intensity of uses because we've been able for a decade now to spend um, about $1.5, $1.6 billion in Woodbridge in that corridor uh, for infrastructure projects. Right? A half a billion was the widening of Route 1 and some other road improvements we're going to hear about tonight. Uh, but it's really important to know that I, as your elected leader, I work for you, I feel comfortable at this point moving forward on the town center at North Woodbridge and the mix of uses coming to that particular location, right? because we've done our homework and we put the infrastructure up front, right? And then we bring the people, okay? Uh, and so we're gonna talk a little bit more about what North Woodbridge is gonna look like, uh, but suffice it to say, it's all online. It is a several hundred page uh, written report. Many of you participate in the town halls leading up to it. Uh, and so it reflects a lot of your comments and input uh, there on North Woodbridge. Um, and uh, uh, with, with this one, uh, that pillar of the vision is uh, uh, pretty much uh, in progress. Um, and so with the uh, five town centers in place, um, the concept is that we can live, work, and play right here. We, we don't have to just live here and drive to Tyson's or Arlington or DC to work. Those jobs will come here. Right now they're not coming here. Quite frankly, it's because we don't have Class A office building. Think about Route 1. Think about Woodbridge. Where do we have Class A office building to bring companies like Amazon? We don't have it. And with the five town centers, we will have Class A office building as part of that growth. At least that's part of the plan. Now we have to rely on the private sector to get their checkbooks out and, and help us make these developments uh, a reality, okay? Um, okay, so what I'd like to do at this point is uh, go straight to uh, uh, our guests uh, who are here to talk about transportation and mobility, the number one concern that I've heard uh, forever uh, as your elected supervisor uh, and uh, when they're done uh, I'll talk a little bit more about where we are with Fast Ferry. Uh, I know um, uh, you're all following that very closely uh, and, uh, and uh, once I'm done with Fast Ferry then we're going to throw it open for questions and answers. Okay and, and uh, our guests will join me in the question and answer session uh, so that uh, we can uh, better prepare our response uh, to, to all of you. So with us tonight is a very special guest from the Prince William County Department of Transportation. Now, if you think about it, it was uh, 15 years ago 
or so that we actually formed a Department of Transportation because the board at the time was sick and tired of the state of Virginia telling us that they could not spend any more money, invest any more money in our roads. That is the responsibility in Virginia, as the state is responsible for building and maintaining our road network, okay? And to a large extent, our transit uh, services as well. And, and because we were growing so fast, the Board of Supervisors, the board prior to me joining it, formed the Department of Transportation. And we've been so successful in building our own roads and uh, building our own mobility, our transit options, that I can tell you that our budget, just for the Department of Transportation, this is countywide, not unique to Woodbridge, is now just over a billion dollars. Uh, and to do that in about 15 years from zero dollars to a billion dollars is quite, quite impressive. And we all know that we're growing at uh, currently three to four percent, right? Uh, and um, uh, not just in Prince William, but Northern Virginia, the DMV in general. Uh, what were the numbers that WTOP Radio uh, uh, said just last week? 1.5, what, what was it? 1.5 million over the next 25 years coming to this region. And uh, I think our demographers believe that, you know, that means that we will continue to grow 3 to 5 percent here in Prince William. Just with Amazon coming, uh, we know that they're creating 25,000 jobs, okay? These are government incentivized jobs to get started. Uh, we know that Amazon will require for every job they create, they'll need one job in an allied industry to support them. So we're looking at about 50,000 jobs coming to Northern Virginia, in particular National Landing. And we know that many of those people who are moving to uh, Amazon, working for Amazon, will be living in Eastern Prince William, potentially at North Woodbridge, and taking VRE to go to work, because it's three stops. Or taking fast ferry, if we're successful in launching fast ferry service, just up the river. Uh, and and, and, and uh, taking them to National Airport and a pedestrian skywalk that they're planning to build uh, there to get people over to National Landing. And so um, with me tonight uh, is, uh, uh, let me just get this right, uh, uh, Paulo, Paulo Belita. Uh, Paulo is going to help us uh, understand uh, the current and planned transit and transportation projects uh, uh, going forward in Woodbridge and Eastern Prince William that will address your concerns about uh, being able to get around uh, particularly uh, AM and PM rush. Uh, and he's got a couple of gentlemen from the department that he's going to introduce as well. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is give him the floor for a few minutes, talk about the projects, hold off on your questions, as soon as he's done, we'll go straight into Q&A uh, and um, feel free. The question and answer session is broader than transportation. If you have something on your mind, something on your street, or uh, something, you know, some issue or some concern that you have, uh, we're here to, to receive it all, not just on transportation. Okay? And so with that, uh, uh, Paulo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Paulo Belita. I'm a planning and program manager with Prince William County uh, Department of Transportation. I mainly deal with project planning and project funding, so my job is to find funding for all our projects. Uh, with me today is Robert Burkhart. He's one of our engineers. His, he's the project manager for the Annapolis Way Project Study. Uh, Mr. Eleanor Adams is the chief of uh, engineering. He deals with our big projects like the commuter garage, which I'll talk about shortly. And as Mr. Principe said, we are excited. We have a big construction program. Uh, over the next five years, we have about a $1.3 billion construction program. And we try to do this using other sources of funding. We try to limit county funding, uh, limit the taxes, and ensure that we use uh, grants or state funding that's available to us. Um, before I get started, I'm going to talk about all the projects in our Woodbridge district. Uh, we, I do want to say that even though we're Department of Transportation, we focus on mobility. So we work closely with our partners at VRE and PRTC to ensure that we're not just building roads. You know, we can't build our way uh, out of traffic, but we're all, also looking at multimodal options. So uh, we're looking at ways to accommodate transit and PRTC service. So 
Um, I want to go over all mostly active projects, some recent completed. Uh, over the tenure of Supervisor Principe, he's, there's been many projects that have been completed, and I wish I had the time to go over all those projects. But this is a snapshot of some of the, some of the projects that we currently have today. And they're going to range from small sidewalk projects to big commuter garages and uh, widening projects. Uh, this is a good example of a small project that has a large impact. This is an express drive sidewalk. Uh, this is a Belmont Bay. Uh, using local funds from the supervisor's office, we constructed a basic sidewalk segment, which increases uh, accessibility and access to the Woodridge Station. This was actually completed several months ago. A small project, but like I said, a big impact. At the Yasco Mills Road Widening, this is our big widening project uh, adjacent to Freedom High School and the Northern Virginia Community College campus. We're widening Yasco Mills Road from two to four lanes between Route 1 and Dale Boulevard. Uh, it's a fairly funded project, meaning uh, we have to go through certain requirements and stricter guidelines. So we actually began our design phase two years ago, but we're going to have that completed uh, early next year. And we plan to go to uh, advertisement for construction uh, early next year, start construction March 2021, and the project <coughs> should be completed early 2023. Annapolis Way, uh, this is a roadway that's in the North Woodridge Samaria plan. So we're currently doing a, a preliminary engineering study. Uh, the project's not fully funded. I'll show you another sketch. So we're looking to connect the missing roadway segment on Annapolis Way. Uh, we're also looking to see what we can do and extend Marina Way to connect to Horner Road. Uh, like I said, it's an unfunded project, but we're going to do up to 60% design. Uh, so we'll come up with concepts. And what we've done so far is we plan to look at the environmental impacts. We're going to look at the traffic based on the proposed Mario plan and see what kind of improvements we can do. So uh, once the study is completed next summer, we're going to look for funding so we can fully fund these projects. So once completed, it's going to lay down the network uh, for the North Woodbridge Samaria plan. Uh, this segment or this part of the county is one of the most multimodal uh, sections of the county. You have uh, 95, Route 1, US 123. Uh, you also have a commuter lot right there and VRE. So we're trying to improve the roadway network in this multimodal uh, section of the county. Uh, another small project, this is a fairly funded corner road sidewalk project currently under design. Uh, this will be completed, actually this was actually recently completed. This is adjacent to Kilby Elementary School. So these are the type of projects that Supervisor Principi has supported over the years. Projects like these cost millions of dollars, but it requires uh, local support, and we will team that through the local supervisor's office. Uh, this is a small project that improves access and safety for, for residents and children that go to the school. Another fairly funded project is the Opitz Boulevard sidewalk project, currently under design. We're going to be begin construction early next year, and we should have that completed uh, by sometime at the end of next year. It improves uh, connectivity of pedestrians in the southern section of Opitz Boulevard to the library. <coughs> so this is our big Potomac Mills, Potomac Niamsco Mills Community Garage project. It's a federally funded project, $37 million. Uh, we're looking to construct a 1,400 space garage over there in Stonebridge. Uh, so what we're doing right now, we're doing some plumbing engineering. Uh, up to 20% design. So this is a unique project. This is a project that's called a design build project. Your typical project, we do a full design and we go out to bid for construction. So what we're doing here is we're looking for an entity, a consultant, a contractor to do the design and the construction all at once. But we are doing some, uh, some high level studies and this is the current concept we have. Uh, you're gonna have access from River Rock Way and Potomac Center Boulevard, as well as Bridgeview Drive. And I had mentioned earlier that we really focus on multimodal transportation. So we're working closely with PRTC to ensure that they have a bus bay access and access to this uh, project or this garage once completed. And another unique aspect of the project is we actually left property here that's owned by the board that's a potential future development. So that's something we look forward to in the future. Our big Route 1 widening project. This is a widening of Route 1 from Featherstone Road to Mary's Way. Uh, it's four to six lanes. Uh, it's another federal project, about $110 million, very expensive. And one of the unique aspects of this project is for the utilities. Uh, the board supported and provided funding to underground all the utilities as part of the project. So you won't see any power lines or any major utilities. Uh, the duck bank construction is actually completed. 
and we're wrapping up and you know going through uh, finalizing the utility improvements that location. So the next step for us is to begin the widening and actual construction of the roadway itself. We're going to advertise early next year, and the construction, the widening itself, will be completed uh, summer 2022. We have some maps out there if you want to talk about it in detail. Uh, another big project, it's actually a project that's done by VDOT. This is the Route 1 123 interchange, but the Phase 1 is what you see out there. Phase 1 is the widening, which is what you see out there. Phase 2, the project, which is the actual interchange, is still unfunded at this time. Uh, phase one, the widening from Annapolis Way to Mary's Way will be completed summer, uh, this upcoming summer actually. Another big beat out project, this was funded earlier this year, this is the I-95 Luther Lane project. And what this does is, it's a small improvement, uh, what it does is it connects the two, two ramps uh, between Gordon Boulevard and, and Prince William Parkway. So, Right now, when you come off Gordon Boulevard, you come off a ramp, you have to merge very quickly. And what the project does is extends that ramp, creates a new lane, takes it to the next off-ramp. So what it does is improves throughput and deals with some of the weaving issues there in hopes of improving some congestion uh, at this location. There's actually a public hearing that's going on tonight. And once, that, once, once that's occurred, we'll know more in terms of detail. But this should be completed in the next couple of years. Another VDOT project, this actually complements a garage, which is located right here. So as part of VDOT's uh, express project going to, to Fredericksburg, they're constructing a new ramp that goes from the express lanes to Opus Boulevard. So as a result, uh, you have Southern Prince William County residents, Stafford residents, and other destination points south. They can use this ramp once it's completed and get off Opus and go to the garage and either take a PRTC express route, uh, do carpooling or slugging. So it's a really, it's a good project that benefits uh, the local residents at this location. Another VDOT project, this is a Blackburn Road at Ripon Boulevard. It's an intersection improvement project. They're installing a signal. Uh, this, they're gonna begin construction in 2020. And there's two other projects nearby, I actually don't have slides for, but uh, county projects, we constructed a uh, parking lot on Blackburn Road and South Trail access uh, that, that brought access to the Naps Creek Boardwalk that's adjacent to this location. Uh, VRB's rip on station improvements. So they're looking to construct a new platform at this location. They're going through some design and the project itself will be completed in uh, 2022. Uh, so it's a quick snapshot of all our projects. Do we want to go into questions now, Supervisor Principal? Introduce you. Yes, uh, I did introduce so. If you have any questions about our Annapolis Way study, Robert Burkhardt's the person to go to. Uh, Eleanor Adam will answer questions about the garage. Uh, any details about our design build procurement? With regard to the interchange, um, uh, the design engineering and right of way has all been paid for. And so all we're looking for, fun, all we're looking for are construction funds which last estimate was in the neighborhood of 80 million. When you're looking at $1.5 billion of already invested, 80 million is not a lot of money, <laughs> relative. Uh, and um, the other development I don't think you mentioned is that you know we've applied for federal funding to help underwrite the cost of this at least three times now and have not scored well enough to get funding. So we've asked VDOT, Virginia Department of Transportation, to go back to the drawing board and redesign the North Woodbridge interchange as a way to, uh, to drive down the cost and, and the scope of the uh, a project, the amenity itself. And I was hoping that that would be ready in December. And do we know the update on they that? They haven't started yet, but they did tell me it's a study that's funded. They're investing a couple hundred thousand to actually study that location and see how they could improve uh, in lowered funding and maybe phase the interchange or look at alternate designs as you mentioned. And that process, that design process is called STAR? Uh, it's, it's STARS. So, Star. yeah. so VDOT has a program called STARS, Strategically Targeted Affordable Roadway Solutions. They look at ways to look at alternative interse intersection designs that are lower in cost but very effective. So that's one thing that they're gonna look at at that location. So it, it's a clear sign that our local Department of Transportation is being very innovative and very creative to get this done. We might have to redesign it, but 
the whole idea here is to get it done. And if we can go back to the uh, Marina Way, Annapolis Way slide. So um, as I mentioned earlier, the Board of Supervisors approved what we call a small area plan for North Woodbridge. And as part of my job, my responsibility, is to ensure that we line up the investment, public and private investment, to get that done. Uh, and I'm happy to say that uh, for Annapolis Way and Marina Way, the design and engineering has been paid for. And we have about $3 million uh, in, a, in an account to pay for construction of Marina Way, right? Uh, and so we are well along <coughs> to dealing with Annapolis Way and Marina Way, which is the internal road network to North Woodbridge, if you've been there. And so it's really critical that we get these roads taken care of as sort of the government responsibility, and then the private sector comes in and builds the mix of uses uh, that we want uh, that's based on, in our plan. Um, and uh, I'll mention to you, um, you know, this is, um, I'm not sure um, it's the right thing to do, but this is currently what's in the plan. And so, uh, help me out, the Occoquan River is oh, right. over here. It's the north. Is kind of okay. Right, well, there's 95. Yeah. And the river's, river's down here. Right here. Maria. So you see the bridge starts here. And Annapolis Way today is not fully connected, the circle. Right, uh, and so that's what the construction is to fully finish this circle here. Uh, but uh, Marina Way <coughs> is here, okay. And what we're talking about, and this is pretty big. What we're talking about is busting a hole right through Gordon Plaza. Everybody know Gordon Plaza on Gordon Boulevard? Sort of a uh, Tired strip mall, if you will. <laughs> yeah, Is that a nice tired. way of putting it? Very tired. Very tired. Uh, and so um, I'll, I'll rely on uh, the county attorneys, but I understand we have condemnation powers, like we've used on Route 1 to whiten it. We have condemnation powers that uh, should the next board approve it, uh, we would be building a road right through Gordon Plaza, uh, which, you know, uh, you know Virginia is a very very much a private property state right and uh to to break uh gordon plaza effectively in half you know may be an opportunity economic opportunity for the current landowners there uh, or or it may be um you know their demise i just don't know uh, and so through government condemnation powers we would connect marina way all the way up to horner road where it dead ends there right and and so uh, creating that internal road network is fundamental to getting the success of the town center. If you think about it, Potomac Town Center would not be Potomac Town Center if it didn't have all those internal roads to get you around, you know, between the Alamo and Uncle Julio's and Wegmans, et cetera, right? Uh, or at Belmont Bay, Belmont Bay Drive, if that wasn't in place, we wouldn't be able to connect you to all of the different places on Belmont Bay Drive or any of the other uh, roads in the town center. Uh, and so I just wanted to point out those two things with regard to uh, transportation. Uh, and do we have a date yet for construct start of construction for Anapsco Mills Road, the widening? The widening of 2021. 2021, okay. okay. And the start date for construction of the parking garage? Um, January of 2021. 2021, 2021 is gonna be a good year. And, and so it's, it's, I'm really pleased that um, well, part of me is very pleased, part of me is very frustrated, of course, that we've been able to get these road investments in place, the design, the engineering, the funding, some uh, construction uh, for some of these roads, uh, that will occur well after I leave office. So, um, uh, the gift that keeps giving, I guess, right? Uh, and so, uh, we're going to need your feedback uh, when uh, the county and when the state holds their public hearings on these things. So I would encourage you strongly to go, provide your feedback on what you think about uh, what's moving forward uh, on our road network. Okay, um, and so with that, what we'd like to do is turn over the rest of our time together uh, 
Well, let me, let me mention Fast Ferry very quickly, sort of whet your appetite. If you have any questions, you can bring them up in the Q&A session. It's seven, almost 7.45. And, and I guess what I want to tell you about Fast Ferry is it ain't going away, okay? I refuse. This is one of those projects from hell, oh, hell, you know? Uh, and uh, we're not giving up. And in fact, after the new year, I may have an announcement uh, that you all will receive through newspaper, etc. Uh, and I want to mention to you that uh, um, the, uh, for What's the first two sessions, my session and Paula's session, uh, we have been taped, videotaped by What's Up Prince William. Uh, it is a great uh, first-hand uh, uh, news source uh, that uh, is available online. If you don't have a subscription, it comes out every day about 5 o'clock. Uh, and a lot of uh, what's going on in Woodbridge is picked up by What's Up Prince William. I think when they started, it was What's Up Woodbridge, and they realized they needed to expand it to Prince William. So uh, this video for these two sessions will be on, posted online the beginning of next week on their uh, website, What's Up Prince William dot, com. dot that, com. W, the, yeah. What's up, Prince William dot com. Yep. Uh, and, but the Q&A session will not be videotaped, okay? So you can say whatever you like. Okay. Fast Ferry. So uh, there's been a flurry of activity around Fast Ferry uh, here in Eastern Prince William. I, I think many of you know that we've done eight, count them, eight studies. The most recent study uh, on this is uh, ULI, the Urban Lane Institute. Uh, thin study, but very powerful. ULI uh, came to Woodbridge for a couple of days uh, with a team of experts. Uh, and as a result, they published this study called A New Riverfront for North Woodbridge. Uh, and so what charge they were given ULI, this professional nonprofit group, was to talk uh, to look at, to examine, and then develop some recommendations on how we could integrate fast ferry service into a town center in North Woodbridge. This is available online at newwoodbridge.org or simply Googling ULI and North Woodbridge. Uh, you'll be able to find it on your desktop. And so uh, the study um, is done uh, very recently here. Uh, the, we also <coughs> finished the study on uh, infrastructure gap analysis and uh, at this point you know we started with over 200 origin and destination points on the Aquaquan Potomac and Anacostia rivers and we keep funneling it down narrowing it down to what is technically and financially viable and we're down to about eight locations Aquaquan Marina is one uh, JBAB Joint Base Anacostia Bowling and uh, you know, immediately next door Department of Homeland Security the new St. Elizabeth campus those three are the top of about eight. And so for the eight, we brought in a consultant to say, if we were gonna land a ferry, and if passengers were gonna have to wait in a terminal, uh, or if people were gonna have to park here in North Woodbridge, what would all that look like and what is the price tag? That study has now been done. We know we're gonna need somewhere between 75 and $100 million for infrastructure to launch ferry service out of Woodbridge. But I'll have to tell you, Alexandria has figured this out, and they are already doing commuter ferry service from Alexandria to National Harbor and to the wharf. Uh, and they started when uh, Metro announced a shutdown between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day. Uh, and so a lot of their Alexandria residents took a ferry to work instead of Metro. Uh, and Alexandria actually underwrote, uh, subsidized the cost of ferry tickets. So ticket, a round trip ticket for anyone using the ferry out of uh, Old Town Alexandria was $10 round trip. That was subsidized. I'm, uh, what I'm proposing is not subsidized, so ticket prices can be higher. Uh, and they moved 5,000 people a week uh, from Alexandria to the Wharf and National Harbor. Without a, when Metro reopened, they continued the service. They're not subsidizing it. Uh, ticket prices have gone up to about $15, $16 round trip, uh, and uh, they're now moving between 2,500 and 3,000 people. So even though Metro is reopened, a lot of people have enjoyed the ride and the view, the reclining leather seats and the Starbucks and the free Wi-Fi, uh, and not sitting in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on any of the interstates. And so what I'd like to do is expand that ferry service down to Woodbridge and to be able to address 
your number one concern about getting moving again, your mobility, and taking with three boats, passenger count of 350 passengers per boat, with turnarounds AM and PM rush hour, we could be taking almost 1.5 million people off of Interstate 95, 395, going to JBAB and Homeland Security with three boats. And I'm thinking small, to start small, have proof of concept, uh, and uh, see if we can uh, sustain it uh, without a government subsidy. Uh, and so um, NBRC, Northern Virginia Regional Commission, and PRTC, now OmniRide, our, our regional transit service is working with our regional planner for Northern Virginia, now working together. Uh, there is an RFI on the street, a request for information to uh, the ferry owner operator industry. Uh, and uh, we're expecting um, proposals back December 15th to PRT City. And then uh, we'll have a couple of weeks to sort of figure out what the industry is saying, given our eight studies, given our economic and, and technical viability of this project. As part of the recent flurry, um, uh, the stakeholder group, which is comprised of 42 different organizations, including the military, local, state, federal government, uh, military, um, private sector, ferry owner operators, we all meet three, four, or five times a year at NVRC. Members of that stakeholder group went to New York and to Seattle to meet with stakeholders in those cities and to understand how did they launch their service and how are they sustaining it, how are things going, what are the lessons learned. And so we brought those lessons back to the stakeholder group uh, we have now turned the corner, we're not doing, uh, don't quote me on this, we're not doing any more studies. <laughs> We've got enough studies. We know it's viable, okay? Uh, but we are now turning our attention to governance. How do we operate it? It's going to serve Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. residents, so it can't just be underwritten by Virginia. It can't just be Virginia's in charge, right? Is it a port authority? Is it some other organization? Is it private sector driven? But we gotta figure out the governance strategy. And we're also now talking uh, with some uh, subject matter experts on how to finance it. Uh, and I am, I've been assured that um, uh, we have taken this project uh, all the way through what's called a public-private partnership. Uh, and there's private sector investment companies, transportation companies, uh, 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 who would be extremely interested in funding that 75 to $100 million capital cost of getting started just between Occoquan, and JBAB and Homeland Security. JBAB and Homeland Security are immediately next door to each other on the river. We would be using one of the uh, docks there, and then we would have shuttle service going into Homeland Security base or going into JBAB space. Our study has indicated that we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 6,000 Woodbridge area residents within a 30 minute drive of the Occoquan Marina that live here and work at JBAP and Homeland Security. 6,000 within a 30 minute drive of the marina. If we just get 5% of those people to change their driving patterns, their behavior, 10%, we would fill up three boats really quick. Just going from here to JBAP and Homeland Security Immediately across the river is National Landing, the future home of Amazon. So we believe that there's a market there for, uh, for Amazon employees who live in Woodbridge or in southern Fairfax who would have a reverse commute, right? Get on a boat and take it to work and then bring it back. We also are working with the private sector in North Woodbridge to accommodate uh, parking. Uh, we are operating what we're calling a transit triangle in North Woodbridge. And if you think about the three points of the triangle, think about the map, one point is the Woodbridge VRE station, which 22,000 people uh, leave on the train every day uh, to go north during AM uh, rush hour. Um, the second point of the triangle would be the future ferry uh, dock at the Occoquan Marina. And the third point of the triangle is the completely underutilized, uh, unimpressive commuter lot at 95 and 123. I'm not sure if you've got that on the map, right up there. And so, I don't know, last time I checked, it's probably only about 60% utilized today. Uh, there's a real problem getting on and off the uh, hot lanes from this lot. 
but I'm envisioning it uh, as a as a transit uh, hub uh, where we have more buses, carpool, vanpool, uh, slug lines, uh, etc. There in the future, and then we would operate a shuttle between those three points to be able. You wake up one morning and you're within a 30-minute drive. You could take a shuttle. Oh, today's Monday. I got to get to a meeting. I'm taking VR8. But on Tuesday, I'm going to enjoy the ferry ride because you know uh, it's walking distance to my office uh, at uh, at National Landing or at JBAD. Uh, and so, what we want to do is build in the redundancy of transit service and the resiliency of transit service. So, if one goes down, and sometimes the river will ice up and ferry service will not be available, but you'll figure that out because you'll have a phone app uh, for real-time information. Uh, and the other good news is the shuttle's already been funded. So now we're just waiting on the ferry. So we have funding for the ferry as a proffer from Riverdale uh, uh, for five years uh, shuttle service. So I'm hoping that PRTC, this is what they do. They do shuttles, they do transit, they do bus. I'm hoping that PRTC will assume the role of operating that shuttle service and being able to move people. Can you imagine if you... If you, you, you could work at George Mason University in Belmont Bay and be able to take the shuttle, uh, or you'd be able to take the train, the VRE train station, and not have to try to cross Route 1 on your own, uh, right? Uh, the North Woodbridge Small Area Plan calls for a pedestrian overpass that connects the VRE station over Route 1 that will connect the future town center of Coles Ford and Station Plaza. Uh, and so uh, that would have to be a government expense, not, I think, a private sector expense. So uh, Fast Ferry is alive and well. Uh, it's already being used here in this region, uh, but we need it to come further south. It's a longer haul. And what we know today, our best estimate today on ticket pricing, which is fundamental to the success, is $30 round trip from here to JBAB and Homeland Security, 15 each way. But government employees and even some private sector employees have a transit card, right? I know some of you may have a transit card that's good for $6 each way, $12 round trip. So you'd be able to apply your transit subsidy to the ferry and take that $30 price ticket round trip down to 18. And if you were to buy an annual pass, which would allow you to use the ferry service any day of the year, that price would come down even lower. That's our best thinking today. Uh, and uh, it bears out with the private sector uh, folks who are on the stakeholder group and who will be responding uh, to this request for information here um, later this month. If we like what we hear from the RFI, that there is industry interest in moving forward, moving into this market and, and making it happen, uh, I would think that uh, the county or PRTC, MBRC would be issuing an RFP, Request for Proposal, get down to you know, a lot more detail, including a budget, uh, later in 2020. So it's alive and well, and uh, the property owners in North Woodbridge are extremely excited about it. It's a real differentiator to be able to uh, have another transit service available uh, to all of you. Um, uh, and it takes a year to build a boat. So the earliest this is gonna happen would be 2022 at this point. It's the best thinking at this point.